The PVC drills that I do, I use a three quarter inch around diameter pole. For adult athletes, pro guys, I use a five foot pole. For younger athletes, we're gonna go to a four foot pole. Um, the three quarter inch piece of this is the extremely important part because we're gonna do some drills where we bend it and I want it to have some, some bend in it. Once you get to one inch, it's too hard for youth players to bend. So three quarter inch around, four feet long if you're using it for a youth athlete, five feet for an adult athlete. I'm gonna take you through seven steps of this first PVC series. I end up having 15 steps in this program, but these are the ones that are relevant to our load stride mechanism as well as our hitting position. In the first, I'm a right-handed hitter. I'm gonna put this just even with my toes on the outside of my right shoe. I explain this as being a flagpole. It's dug into the ground, deep into the ground. It's not moving. And I'm gonna take my hands, shoulder level, where they would be at my launch. So if I'm a player that has a little more freedom in my stance, I'm not starting my hands where I would in my stance, I'm starting my hands where I would be in my hitting position. Step one of this series is a simple walk away. As I walk away, I'm trying to get strong into the ground. Create the anchor into the ground by pushing the ground away from me when I land. So this is where I'm gonna feel quad tension, hamstring, and glute, all three. The pole has to remain in place. I'm not pulling it forward with me. I'm walking away from it. It gives me stability because it is dug into the ground, but it does have actual stability because it's in contact with the ground now. So I'm gonna walk away and I'm gonna do that five times. Strong into the ground, pause. Strong into the ground, pause. I wanna have that one second pause just so I can feel the tension in my legs. And another important piece as I face you this way is that my eyes and shoulders stay on the pitcher. Players are gonna to wanna to look at the action that's happening behind them and they're gonna to start to create more of a habit of that inward turn we're trying to stay away from. So get into the ground, pause. We're gonna do five reps of that. Step two, now we're gonna get into that same hitting position, pause one second into the ground, and turn the middle of my body. The belly button is gonna make the turn. So I'm gonna step turn, step pause, turn the middle of my body. And that turn is only as much as my front shoulder is staying in place. Still walking away from my hands, eyes up on the pitcher, step, turn the middle of my body. What you're gonna see your younger players do that aren't as strong up top, they're gonna to step, and turn like this. They're gonna to try to pull away with their front shoulder instead of leaving it in place. I'll show you that again. This is correct, turn in the middle of my body. I'm gonna pause, incorrect, trying to turn and pull the torso. So that's step two. Step three, doing the exact same drill. This is a progression. Now I'm doing it in one fluid motion. So this one's a step turn. I'm still walking away from the pole outside my back shoe. Step turn. Step turn, anchor up top, anchor down low. Step turn, shoulder stays in place, pull stays behind me. Step turn. So now we're working on the sequence of the unwind with anchor strong, bottom and top, elastic stretch in the middle. Step four, we're gonna start the slotting action of my rear elbow. We know that when we turn tight, the elbow is gonna be very tight to the rib cage. We're gonna feel the muscles on the back side of the shoulder. And my shoulder blade, it's gonna be your infraspinatus. You're gonna feel that on the back side of the shoulder blade. As I pull the elbow into the body, it's gonna light up. It's a really small, dense muscle. And when you do this drill, you really feel it activate. So I think that gives a little more credence to kids understanding what the scap load really is and then how it functions in the slotting action of the swing. So this time I'm gonna to try to bend the pole backwards after I make the turn, or as I'm making the turn. Step, turn, bend the pole. Step, turn, bend the pole. So you can see how it's bowing out towards your camera. So I'm pulling it directly back behind me. You're gonna see my rear elbow slot tight to my body. Step, turn, bend the pole. Step, turn, bend the pole. Watch on the back side of my shoulder, you'll see that muscle on my shoulder blade flexing here. Step, turn, bend the pole. Step, turn, bend the pole. So that's step four of the PVC progression. Now, I'm taking stability in that aid out of the ground. So if I take the stability out of the ground, how am I gonna create my anchor up top? 
And I do so by having to get tight up top. And we're going to do this really in our serratus. This is underneath our armpits. I'm going to squeeze in order to create that anchor in my scapula. So we're going to feel it on the backside of the shoulder. Definitely going to feel it underneath the armpits of the serratus. So now my goal is I'm taking this pole out of the ground. But I want to imagine it is still dug deep into the ground and it's not moving. Without this stability, I have to create it, and I ask the kids, what are you going to create it with? You have several options here. You can say your hands, my arms, if they know the answer already with their serratus, and I try to teach them some of the muscles and they learn it that way, but that's what we're going to do. I'm walking away from my hands, and I'm creating that tension up top. So I'm going through the exact same progression in steps five, six, and seven that we started into the ground with steps one, two, and three. So I'll repeat those. Five reps of each. This one's just a simple walk away. Get tight up top. Strong down low. Walking away from my hands. Elbows elevated in the scap load position. I stay up on the pitcher. Anchor up top. Anchor down low. Step six. Have the one second pause into the ground. Turn the middle of my body. Step hold, I'm tied up top, I'm tight down low, turn the middle of my body. I'm only turning as much as the rope in the middle of my body gets fully tightened because I have to keep my front shoulder in place. So if I have a hypermobile hitter, they're gonna turn more with their hips and keep the shoulder in place if they're strong enough to do so than what you're gonna see me do. Now I am very low on the mobility scale, so the rope in my body is pretty short. You're not gonna see me move a great deal in my turn, because that, that's my maximum thoracic capability in, in rotation without my shoulder moving. So it's gonna be a little bit different for each hitter. Still so have the pause, step, pause, turn the middle. Finally, step seven is we're doing that one in one fluid motion. So I'm going step turn, anchor up top, anchor down low, one fluid motion. So in my drill work and prep work, I have hitters that bring these and carry these with them really everywhere they go. It's, they have their bat, they have their glove, they have their PVC pipe. So this is something I do with seven and eight year olds, and you'll see every one of our pro guys walking around with it as well. So you'll see major league players doing this exact same warm up plan and prep plan that I do with eight, nine year olds, people that are just starting out. So it's highly effective, and this is really the first thing and why one of the first drills that we're putting on your sequential plan that need to be ingrained in you.